Scenario. A patient goes into her pediatrician's office after falling from her bike. She hit her head in the fall and lost consciousness for a short time. The patient has vomited multiple times and has scalp swelling. It is very important while we do the initial assessment to see if there are any red flags that may prompt further evaluation after the injury has occurred. We know that concussions are the most common neurologic injury in sports. It's not the only one. You know, kids that suffer traumatic brain injuries, whether it's on the football field or in, in some other venue, they can, they can definitely suffer other problems in the brain. They can have bleeding in the brain. They can have skull fractures. They can have just swelling in the brain. It's important for the pediatricians or the clinicians to know uh, what the signs and symptoms are that maybe some other, some other problem could be going on in the, in the brain then. A child who has a head injury uh, if they exhibit cer certain red flags, uh, need to be evaluated in the emergency department immediately. Some of these red flags include things like uh, an alteration in the level of consciousness that would be indicated by a Glasgow coma score of less than 15, uh, an abnormality in the neurologic exam, such as focal deficits, or uh, suspicion of a skull fracture, uh, especially a basilar skull fracture that would be indicated by uh, symptoms such as clear drainage of fluid from the nose or ears or ecchymosis behind the ears or the eyes uh, uh, or concern that this may this head injury may be from uh, something the symptoms may be from something different than the head injury. If a patient has any of the following you should refer to the emergency department immediately. Altered mental status. Concern for intracranial process concern that symptoms may not be related to the recent minor head injury, abnormal neurological exam, evidence or strong suspicion of skull fracture. Consider obtaining a CT scan for the following, non-frontal hematoma, multiple and or worsening symptoms, especially in a younger child, severe headache and or recurrent vomiting, severe mechanism. This algorithm shows the protocols used at Children's to determine if a patient should be observed in the emergency department or if additional testing or transfers to other specialists are required. The guidelines also help deliver standardized care and discharge instructions for patients. Head injuries are uh, one of the most common injuries seen in children and with the uh, increasing prevalence of uh, sports now both at high school and middle school level and fairly aggressive uh, levels of uh, sports participation, head injuries are becoming very common nationwide as well as in Atlanta. And in the emergency department, we do see a lot of children with head injuries and a lot of them with concussions. And uh, the attempt with these guidelines, as is the case with any other guideline, is to not only standardize how we uh, evaluate children, but in this case in particular, there was a very recent article in The Lancet that uh, talked about uh, when head CT scans are required in men a minor injury and when they can be uh, withheld safely. And uh, we used that Lancet article to uh, guide our uh, pathway, our, our guideline. Uh, as to when, uh, as to how to manage these children, when they require a head CT scan and when it can be safely withheld. A concussion is a brain injury that is not seen on a head CT scan. However, a negative head CT scan is not required to make the diagnosis of a concussion. In the past, uh, doctors uh, would order head CT scans for uh, a lot of children, even with minor head injury. Uh, and once they were negative, they would perhaps call it a concussion. But we all know the risk of radiation now with CT scans. So uh, we are much more careful in when we order them and recognizing that, uh, that you don't have to have a negative head CT. A concussion is a diagnosis that can be made on, based on clinical symptoms alone. Uh, a CT scan may be indicated in some other situations, even if the child does not require emergency evaluation in the, in the emergency department. Uh, uh, some of those include uh, things like uh, severe symptoms or worsening symptoms or multiple symptoms such as a severe headache and uh, persistent emesis or concern uh, in a child who has a pre-existing medical history where uh, such as a bleeding disorder uh, would be indications for a head CT.
uh, with or without an ER evaluation. Many of the things we worry most about with head injury are not necessarily independently predictive of a serious brain injury. In other words, a child who's had a head injury who's vomited, vomiting by itself is not independently predictive of head injury. That child does not necessarily need a CT scan, although they may need an observation. A child who's had loss of consciousness, if it's brief, does not necessarily need a CT scan. So many times, community physicians, very concerned about the ch children that they're seeing, may send the child to the emergency department and give the parents the expectation that you're going to get a head CT. But our job is to make that evaluation when we see the patient. And many of these children meet the criteria for a concussion, but not the criteria for a head CT as we've defined the algorithm. The algorithm is, uh, is, is intended to guide our treatment, but it's very useful, I think, for community physicians to understand what can we expect when the child goes to the emergency department. And so it takes a child who's had uh, a head injury who is um, what we call a GCS of 14 or 15, which means they are mildly affected and they are basically normal appearing. If they are not, then this is not the algorithm for this patient. If they are uh, head injured and mildly affected, meaning they may have a headache, they may have vomited, they might have had a loss of consciousness, but they're otherwise unaffected, they're responding appropriately to commands and questions, they have a mild head injury, which may suggest a more serious condition um, and that's why they're coming in to see us. The algorithm takes us from uh, the patient who presents with these symptoms and helps us decide who should get an imme immediate CT scan and who we can watch. The children who need an immediate CT scan include those who are um, definitely not normal in their baseline. Uh, they're not answering questions. They're altered. They have a focal neurological abnormality on examination. Uh, we don't need to worry about watching them. We need to get a CT scan and see what's going on. The other patients who seem otherwise normal, whose neurological exam is normal, um, and may have an upset stomach, might have a headache, may have passed out, but otherwise seem fine, can be safely watched depending on the severity of their symptoms. The more severity, the more frequent symptoms that they have, if they have more than one or two, raises the risk, and we have to make a judgment call then. After watching them and seeing them improve, it's safe to send them home, but only if they're improving and if their symptoms are easily controlled with oral medication. If they're not, some of these children spend the night with us. Our hope is not to do a CT scan on every head injured patient. Uh, there are mounting concerns about the effects of radiation on children, and head injury is very frequent. Uh, most of these children do not require a head CT. What they require is a careful history and physical examination by someone who sees this for a living. And I think most patients do very well with that, and most parents understand it, but sometimes it takes a little while of a little bit of a discussion to help work them through the difference between a neurosurgical emergency and the injury that you have from concussion, which is not something you can see on CT scan. One thing I have found is that uh, talking to them about a concussion, telling them what it is, and uh, why uh, it does not necessarily require a head CT scan, and of course, when you mention the risk of radiation, parents are much more willing to accept not getting a head CT scan done. Many questions are asked not only about a CT scan, but about an MRI scan. Yeah. CT scan is primarily the gold standard right now for a child with a concussion. If you're going to do any imaging procedure, that's the one that is recommended. But not every child needs a CT scan. Recently, there's been question about exposure to levels of radiation with CT scans, particularly if you're doing it serially. The things to know uh, for the PCPs are that we have one of the lowest radiation doses per scan for CTs in the country. Uh, so that reduces a lot of the risk that we're worried about in getting a CT. It remains very important uh, for uh, pediatricians, coaches, parents, all to remember the importance of prompt recognition of con concussions. Uh, if they are promptly recognized, the importance, the significance would be that uh, the child would not be allowed to return to play too rapidly and uh, have the risk of second impact syndrome. Uh, sometimes uh, uh, knowing that you don't have to be seen in the ED, they may feel, well, this is not an important injury and it's okay to go right back to play. No, that is not the case. And the other important point to emphasize is the significance of uh, appropriate management and particularly of follow-up until all symptoms have resolved.